The power for me to be successful was not in the teachers, it was not in the educational system, it was not in my culture, it was not in my society, it was within me. And I began to think, God, if you are a good God, why am I poor? Mm. If you are a great God, why are these people better than me? If you make me in your image, why are they special and I'm a monkey? And that night, no thunder, no lightning, no earthquakes, nothing. I just heard a voice in my mind, and the voice said, I ask you to believe me, and you will be saved, not them. And that night, I made a commitment to believe what God said. 13 years ago, I said, okay, I believe that I have the power to experience far beyond all I can ever ask, think, or imagine. 13 years old, and that's when my pursuit of God began. When was it that you realized you wanted to become a preacher? You know, I didn't want to become a preacher. Matter of fact, today I still don't consider myself a preacher. I think uh, it drove me to have a passion to help everybody who's been oppressed. My passion is to make sure that no one can, should live under what I experienced. I never desired to be a, a, a minister. I desire to help people. My definition of leadership is very simple yet complicated. I believe that leadership is uh, the capacity to influence others through inspiration, not manipulation. And that inspiration comes from a passion which is motivated by a sense of vision and a sense of purpose. So leadership is first personal, then it's corporate. Uh, leadership is not something you pursue, it's something you discover. Leaders are born when a human discovers something more important than their personal ambition. Leadership is You don't more. pursue it? Leadership you discover. is No, true leaders do not seek followers. Mm. Leaders actually are pursuing a passion mm. toward a purpose that gives them a sense of destiny. Yeah. For example, one of the greatest leaders of example that I use is Nelson Mandela, mm. one of your yeah. great presidents. Uh, he never sought followers. Think about it. He discovered a purpose that was more important than his private pres preservation, his private ambition. He pursued that person purpose privately. It attracted people. So leaders don't seek followers. Followers are attracted to leaders. Leaders are more concerned about discovering a purpose to improve the life of humanity that's more important than their personal ambition. So they sacrifice themselves to accomplish something for the greater good. Yeah. We find that very rarely. Mm -hmm. Most people we call leaders are simply professional manipulators. Mm -hmm. And they actually are more concerned about their own promotion than promoting the people. Do we sit down and let change just happen to us? Or are we just watching change happening around us? Or are we aware that change is happening within us? Or are we going to be those proactive people who make sure that we affect what happens to us? Change also produces four types of people. They are in this room. First of all, uh, there are people who, who watch things happen. Now, let me say something about change. This is important here. Not all change is improvement. You used to weigh 128. And now you changed. And for some of you, that's not an improvement. You lost your wardrobe. <laughs> you lost your ability to climb up steps fast. You even lost the quality of health that you had. Change doesn't mean improvement all the time. But the problem is, without change, there can be no improvement. So you have to decide what to do with change. Change will happen. And if you are not careful, it could be destructive. So you have to determine what kind of change do I want in my life? And I want you as a young person, as a mother and a father, as a business person, to think about your company even, or your family, or your educational pursuit. Uh, what kind of classes do you want to take in college this year? What kind of grades do you want? What kind of relationships do you want to have in your life? Who do you want to drop and who do you want to pick up in your relationships? What kind of people do you want to associate with? Where do you want to travel that you've never been? What are the books you need to read you never read before? The changes come with choices. 
So what kind of big person are you? Success is, a, is, is not something you pursue. Success has a matter, is a matter of, of becoming a person of value. Uh, we should not be pursuing money. We should pursue uh, purpose. We should pursue vision for ourselves and for our countries, for our communities. Uh, we should be not pursuing things. We need to pursue ideas. That's right. uh, I always say that there are three types of people in the world. There's poor people, there's rich people, and there's wealthy people. Poor people talk about money all the time. Rich people talk about things. Wealthy people, they talk about ideas. Uh, rich people, poor people, and wealthy people think differently. For example, poor people, they pursue money. Rich people pursue things. Wealthy people pursue ideas. And so that constantly there's a different way of thinking. I hope that the third world countries and the young people of our nations will become ideas people. You know, ideas control the world, it's not money. And uh, ideas attract money. So I think if we, if we minimize this desire to get money and elevate the creativity of new ideas, we will find that financial uh, results will naturally flow to it. Bill Gates didn't, didn't pursue money, he pursued an idea. Uh, Stephen Jobs, the late Stephen Jobs, who invented the Apple computer and uh, the iPhone, he never went after money, he developed an idea. And I think, if you think of all the wealthy people in the world, it was ideas that made them wealthy, not money. That's right. So I think we need to, re to switch it, re reverse it. Don't pursue money and then try to get an idea. Get an idea and money will pursue the idea and you become a, a byproduct as far as wealth. Change is inevitable. Change is also the principle of life. That means everything that is alive will change. And even things that are not alive will change. You know, a lady came to me, she says, I came to the Bahamas for the last 10 years and I missed four years. And I came here this past month and everything is different. The airport is new, she said. What happened to the old airport, she says. In other words, even the things not alive are changing. The way the river runs down the mountain is wearing away the mountain. You go back to that mountain 10 years later and the river is wider. Change is in creation. It's part of life. So here is the question then. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, to everything there is a season. And to every purpose under heaven there is a time for it. For, to, to everything there's a season. How many things have a season? Everything. This is one of the best news I ever got in my life. When I understood this, I was a teenager and it changed my life. When I understood that everything is a season, let me tell you why. If you're having a bad time right now, it cannot last. If you cannot find a job right now, that is only a season. If your business is going in the wrong direction, it's a seasonal slide. If nobody wants to marry you, that's only a season. There's going to come a season when everybody wants to marry you. You got choices. <laughs> if you have no money right now, the good news is I am seasonally broke. Tell your neighbor, it's only for a time. That's the good news. And that's why we are always reminded never make a permanent decision in a temporary problem. I tell our young people, I say to you right now, stop looking for employment. Why don't you position yourself differently and look for deep life? To employers, to be employed means that somebody else is benefiting from your energy. To deploy, me, to de to deploy yourself means that you are using your own energy to be productive. So instead of waiting for someone to give you a job, create your own work. That's why I tell people there's a difference between your work and your job. Your job is what they train you to do. Your work is what you were born to do. Your job is your skill, which they can fire you from that in time. But your work is your gift. No one can take that from you. Your job 
is where you get compensation for activity. Your work is where you get fulfillment because you love it so much. Your job, you can retire from. Your work, you can never retire from work because your work is you. So when a person discovers their work, they, they no longer need a job because their, their work makes them productive. So there are young people in this country who are full of talents, full of gifts. And I want to say this too. Every problem in life is a business. All businesses are simply someone solving a problem. So the more problems that are in Kenya, the more businesses available for young people to begin. And this is what I think we are lacking. We are trained to get a job. We're not trained to start a business. We are trained to let other people employ us, not trained to deploy ourselves.